nightmares it's me again and welcome back to my channel today well well first off, i always want to say i'm sorry for like not really uploading for like two weeks so yeah i had a lot of stuff going on but like here i am <laughs> now this now uh today i want to be doing mr white mouth by snarled So, I haven't, I heard about this creepypasta, and I, and he always scared the crap out of me when I was young. <laughs> Every, I remember, uh, I don't know how old I was, but I remember I used to look him up, because I was so obsessed with creepypasta back then, but like, I used to look him up, and like, he was just so cute, but he still looked disturbing. <laughs> so, and then like, somebody did a video of like how their voice would be if they were real like how their voice would be and when i heard why mr white mouth i was done <laughs> so don't ask me where i am there's just the tv right here so yeah <laughs> now without further ado let's get right into it i have a new game we can play Hey, I'm Sapphire. He is creepy. <laughs> Our next chapter is a creepy pasta written by Perfect Circle 35. During my childhood, my family was like a drop of water in a vast river, never remaining in one location for long. We were living in a house just outside the bustling metropolis of New Vineyard, Maine. Population, 643. The day after my fifth birthday, I came down with a fever. The doctor said I had mononucleosis, which meant no rough play and more fever for at least another three weeks. It was horrible timing to be bedridden. We were in the process of packing our things to move to Pennsylvania, and most of my things were already packed away in boxes, leaving my room barren. My mother brought me ginger ale and books several times a day. I and love these ginger served ale. the function of being my primary form of entertainment for the next few weeks. Boredom always looms just around the corner. I don't exactly recall how I met Mr. Widemouth. I think it was about a week after I was diagnosed with mono. My first memory of the small creature was asking him if he had a name. He told me to call him Mr. Widemouth because his mouth was large. In fact, everything about him was large in comparison to his body. His head, his eyes, his crooked ears, but his mouth was by far the largest. You look kind of like a Furby. Furby? What's a Furby? You know, the toy. The little robot with the big ears. You can pet and feed them, almost like a real pet. Oh, you don't need one of those. They aren't the same as having a real friend. No. <laughs> I remember Mr. Widemouth disappearing every time my mother stopped by to check in on me. I don't want your parents to see me because I'm afraid they won't let us play anymore. The third or fourth morning after I met him, he greeted me with a large smile on his face. I have a new game you can play. No. We have to wait until after your mother comes to check on you because she can't see us play it. It's a secret game. After my mother delivered more books and soda at the usual time, Mr. Widemouth slipped out from under the bed and tugged my hand. We have to go to the room at the end of this hallway. I objected at first, as my parents had forbidden me to leave my bed without their permission, but Mr. Widemouth persisted until I gave in. The room in question had no furniture or wallpaper. Its only distinguishing feature was a window opposite the doorway. Mr. Widemouth darted across the room and gave the window a firm push, flinging it open. He then beckoned me to look out at the ground below. We were on the second story of the house, but it was on a hill, and from this angle, the drop was farther than two stories due to the incline. I like to play pretend up here. I pretend that there's a big soft trampoline below this window, and I jump. If you pretend hard enough, you bounce back up like a feather. Wait, there's no trampoline down there? Oh, no. Oh, no. Where's the... No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, no, ma'am, no turkey ham. <laughs> uh-uh. That's... Oh, that's okay. I trust Mr. White Mouth, man. He couldn't be my friend. I would have been snitched him. I would have been saying, Mom, he's here. He's here. <laughs> Yeah. I want you to try. I was a five-year-old with a fever, so only a hint of skepticism darted through my thoughts okay. as I looked down and considered the possibility. It's a long drop, I said. That's all part of the fun. 
It wouldn't be fun if it was only a short drop. What? <laughs> if it were that way, you may as well just bounce on a real trampoline. I toyed with the idea, but the realist in me prevailed. I don't know if I have enough imagination. I could get hurt. Mr. Widemouth's face contorted into a snarl, but only for a moment. If you say so. <laughs> he, said. he spent the rest of the day <laughs> under my bed, me. quiet as a mouse. The following morning, Mr. Widemouth arrived holding a small box. I want to teach you how to juggle, he said. Here's some things you can use to practice. I looked in the box. It was full of knives. Oh. My parents will kill me, I shouted, <laughs> horrified that Mr. Widemouth had brought knives into my room, objects that my parents would never allow me to touch. Mr. Widemouth frowned. Wow. It's fun to juggle with these. <laughs> I want you to try it. No. I pushed the box away. Knives aren't safe to just throw in the air. Thank you. Mr. Widemouth's frown deepened into a scowl. He took the box of knives and slid under my bed, remaining there the rest of the day. I began to wonder how often he was under me. I started having trouble sleeping after that. Mr. Widemouth often woke me up at night, saying he put a real trampoline under the window. A big one. One that I couldn't see in the dark. I always declined and tried to go back to sleep, but Mr. Widemouth persisted. Sometimes he stayed by my side until early in the morning, encouraging me to jump. He wasn't so fun to play with anymore. My mother came to me one morning and told me I had her permission to walk around outside. She thought the fresh air would be good for me, especially after being confined to my room for so long. Ecstatic, I put on my sneakers and trotted out to the back porch, yearning for the feeling of sun on my face. Mr. Widemouth was waiting for me. I have something I want you to see. No. He said. I must have given him a weird look because he then said, It's safe. I promise. I followed him to the beginning of a deer trail which ran through the woods behind the house. I still couldn't trust him. This is an important path. He explained. I've had a lot of friends about your age. When they were ready, I took them down this path to a special place. You weren't ready yet, but one day, I hope to take you there. I returned to the house, wondering what kind of place lay beyond that trail. Two weeks after I met Mr. Widemouth, the last load of our things had been packed into a moving truck. I considered telling Mr. Widemouth that I would be leaving, but even at five years old, I was beginning to suspect that perhaps the creature's intentions were not to my benefit, <laughs> despite what he said otherwise. Oh, yeah. For this reason, I decided to keep my departure a secret. My father and I were in the truck at 4 a.m. I saw Mr. Widemouth's silhouette in my bedroom window. He stood motionless until the truck was about to turn onto the main road. Is that a knife? He gave a pitiful little wave goodbye, steak knife in hand. <laughs> I didn't wave back. Years later, I returned to New Vineyard. The piece of land our house stood upon was empty, except for the foundation, as a house burned down a few years after my family left. Out of curiosity, I followed the trail that Mr. Widemouth had shown me. Part of me expected him to jump out from behind a tree, but I felt that Mr. Widemouth was gone, somehow tied to the house that no longer existed. The trail ended at the New Vineyard Memorial Cemetery. I noticed that many of the tombstones belong to children. No. Want some snarl swag? Head on over to our website at snarl.com. Want to see something scary live? Check. <laughs> what? What? Uh, you know, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna comment. I'm not gonna comment. Uh, what else? Hmm. I never watched a satellite stalker. I don't even know what it is. Eh, might as well. I mean, I do do uh two videos in one for snow. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. <laughs> the face. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, Emmanuel. She was coming for me. What does she want? Hey, I'm Sapphire. Want to hear something scary? <laughs> Google Earth is a pretty amazing website, but it can also lead to some strange discoveries. In our next chapter, I will be telling you a story that originates from creepypasta. A few years ago, I was in a car accident. 
Since then, I really don't leave the house that often. It's difficult, and the idea of seeing a car drive by makes me feel lightheaded. So my friend showed me Google Maps. I was fascinated by the fact that I could see all over the world, almost like being there. I became instantly hooked. I'd virtually walk down streets in China, Japan, Germany, England, so、That's、many、cool. places. The faces of the people were always blurred to protect their privacy, but it was still enjoyable to see them out there, enjoying their life, walking like it was no big deal. One day, when I was looking around Tokyo, I spotted a woman wearing bright red sneakers, the same kind I was wearing. She must have good taste. I laughed. I zoomed in closer and noticed her black pants, her gray bag she carried over her black hooded jacket. She was walking in a relaxed manner, one hand trailing the wall beside her. I bet if I could have seen her face, she'd be smiling. I began to feel a little sad. I wish that I could be there, walking so carefree with her. That wouldn't happen though, until I died. Man. I was stuck in this chair. I sighed and zoomed out of Tokyo.、Huh. I turned off the computer and went to bed. I got up early and decided to look around Paris. I randomly zoomed to an area and saw a street lined with old brick buildings and a few small shops and an old tan brick church. I spun the view around a few more times and then saw something peculiar. Sitting on the bench at the bus stop were two people. One of them was a young woman with her feet stuck in front of her in a relaxed manner. She was wearing those same red sneakers. I was startled for a moment as I noticed the black pants and black hooded jacket. Her dark brown hair was tied loosely behind her head. A gray bag sat on the bench beside her. This is crazy. I thought it can't possibly be the same woman. This is a different country, different continent even. How could it be her? This is stupid. It wasn't as if these were live photographs. They were taken ahead of time and then stored. It's not like she was in two places at once. She could just be a traveler. Besides, without seeing her face, it was impossible to tell it was the same person. Brown is a common hair color. Those red sneakers were something I purchased online. I'm sure a million other people did too. I shook my head and went to fix some lunch. When I got back online, I decided to look at Berlin. I picked a random street as usual. It looked pretty empty. Quit it. Like that's supposed to scare me. Uh, on the other side, I don't say hey. Move. Move. What? You ruining my video. Wait, you gotta wait. Come on, man. Y'all, excuse me. That's my sister. See, <laughs> there wasn't much to see at all, really. I was disappointed and moved my cursor to click away when something caught my eye. I turned the view, and there they were. A girl. Those damn red sneakers. I stared in shock. How could she be there too? Even if she was traveling, there's no way I would find her every time. Okay. Even finding her in Paris would have been one heck of a coincidence. But this, this was crazy. Was this some kind of joke? Had Google decided to play a prank on its users that use their product so much? I did a quick search, looking for a note about a woman that shows up like Waldo. There was nothing. I looked through articles on strange things you can see on Google Maps, but none of them mentioned the woman that travels the world with you. Had my self-imposed isolation driven me mad? Had I become so lonely that I created a hallucination for myself? I sent a text message to a friend asking him to look at the locations. I asked him if he saw the same woman. Then I waited, hands sweating, heart thumping in my chest. I jumped when my phone beeped. I see the lady you're talking about in Berlin. I didn't see her in Paris or Tokyo. Is this some kind of game or what? Are you okay? I didn't respond. Instead, returning to the locations in Tokyo and Paris. Oh my god, man! No. Oh my god! Oh my god, man! This is the bad spot I'm in. They left yet? Oh my god! And then leave. Hey, move, 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 move! They did leave. Stop! Get off the camera. They didn't. Oh, thank God. Oh, <laughs> my bad, y'all. If y'all, okay, somebody was walking. A woman with her children. She was walking. Um, she... it looked like she was looking at me through the window. I don't want to be like, I'm. Okay, if y'all would have seen how she was, it kind of looked like I'm the person stalking her, even though I wasn't. <laughs> so I don't want to be that one trying to get caught. Like they staring at me through the window, so it was kind of awkward.
<laughs> anyway. There she was. I shivered. Who was she? What was happening? I switched to Sydney. Then London, Zurich, Hong Kong. She was everywhere I looked. In each picture, she came closer and closer to looking directly at me with her blurred out face. I'm done. My heart felt like a terrified bird slamming around inside my chest. Who was she? Was she me? Was I following her? I wish I could see the expression on her face. No, was she? She saw when she looked back at me. I wanted to get out of the chair and run. Why is it that the only thing that made me feel free again was the thing that made me feel even more trapped? I typed in the name of my town and zoomed into a random street. It was a couple of miles from my house. The gates to the city park were shown in the clarity of daylight, despite it being night here. There she was. There she was. She was only a few miles from my house. What? She was near me. And she was watching me. She was coming for me. What did she want? I typed in the name of the apartment complex where I live. I could see the outside of the building. The parking lot was full of cars, and there were a few blurred out children in the playground. I searched everywhere for her. She wasn't in the parking lot or on the sidewalks, not hiding between the buildings or standing in the playground. I even scanned each of the cars, behind the bushes, and each of the blurred windows. She wasn't there. I curled tightly around myself and lay my head down on the desk. This place was safe. I didn't leave the apartment anyway. I would never use Google Maps again. I would never see her again. She could stay at the park for all I cared. <laughs> I'm safe, I said to myself in a whisper. It felt good to hear it out loud. I'm safe. A chill ran down my spine. I had a camera hooked to my computer that showed who was at the front door. As I went to turn on the security feed, the images that I'd seen had only shown the outside of the building. Just the outside. I looked to the screen saw a woman in black pants and a black hooded jacket and carrying a gray bag with a shoulder strap. Of course, there were those red sneakers. She looked directly at the camera, her face still a complete blur Is that as she reached her hand out in front of her. That's when I heard the front door slowly open. Once no. I snarled merch, head over to snarl.com where you can snag sweet pins no. and other items what like happened? a limited edition something scary poster. What? Dog, what happened? I know it's creepy possible, but like, oh my god! What's it? I'll be scared. Oh, that is scary. That is. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, well, that's all for today, I guess. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I'll follow you back. I'll put a description down below. And before I leave, let me do some shout outs because I know some of y'all want me to do this. And yes, I wrote it down. Now, shout out to, now if y'all hear your names, say yes or whatever y'all do. <laughs> now, Reagan Smith, Green and Tia Wolf, Serenity Jones, Wrong 47. Bree T, Wolf Girl, Yolo, The Love WWE, Angel Cameron, Screw Names, Caesar Morales, Reggie Joseph, Liz Whitehead, and last, most certainly not least. Shout out to Lil Boy 900 who recommended me to watch Wide Mouth, the first video. And yep, if y'all if y'all uh heard y'all names, you know, cheer, you know, whatever y'all do. <laughs> and yep. So let me know, let me know what else y'all want me to do. Comment, recommend, subscribe. I mean, you know, uh, blah, blah. Recommend me and I'll give you a shout out. So as of now, see you later my little nightmares. Peace.